Assalamu alaikum brothers, sisters, friends, welcome to this week's episode of the GDM show, the Global Dawah Movement show. On today's show we have our beloved brother Ustad Asifuddin. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Very, very good. So, brother, we're going to be discussing something very important today, sure. right? And that's to do with the Dawah and knowledge. Mm-hmm. And how these two things come together and what's the balance between the two because we live in a time where we have almost two opposites we have one where there are brothers who are involved in the dawah and when it comes to knowledge like i don't have time i'm I'm doing dawah all the time i don't have time to sit and read the quran or study anything and then you have another extreme we have a group of people who say well i need to study and attain knowledge and i'm not going to give any dawah right now, what is the correct understanding between these two realities? What's the correct balance? Inshallah, share that with us. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. First of all, jazakallah khair for inviting me onto this show. Um, this is a very important issue regarding knowledge and da'wah. In reality, both of these uh, great aspects of Islam uh, go hand in hand. Um, and it's really important that we understand the way that it's uh, the, the way that they fit in together. So, in order for someone to give da'wah, mm. they have to have knowledge, of course. Yes. In fact, the first command uh, from the Quran was Iqra, yeah. read or recite in the name of your Lord. So, but it wasn't just enough just for a person for a person just to have that knowledge. Mm. They have to, as some of the scholars say, to give zakah to that knowledge. And the way that so. they give charity to that knowledge is by conveying it to other people, whether it be non-Muslims, whether it be Muslims. I'm pretty sure that every single person in this country, uh, every single Muslim in this country knows a person who's not praying, right? Mm. So it's, it's an obligation. So it's not just obligatory to, to have knowledge, but it's mm. an obligation to uh, give da'wah. Now the levels of obligation for knowledge is dependent in this particular scenario, uh, is contingent upon what kind of da'wah you're giving. Okay. So if a person is giving da'wah to non-Muslims, then he, this individual needs to know, uh, you know uh, the, the Islamic discourse and the, uh, you know, the, the knowledge which relates to giving da'wah to Christians or Jews or even atheists. Okay. So what we're saying, what you're saying essentially is, if you're giving da'wah to non-Muslims, the most important thing is you need some fundamental knowledge. Absolutely. You need to be well grounded in it, such yeah. as who Allah is such as Akida, for example, you need to know these things so you're conveying the right things to people. Yeah. And you're, what you're also saying, correct me if I'm wrong, is that then you have to look at the specialized areas such as, okay, Christians, you know, atheists, who are you giving dawah to? Sure. And then be specialized in that area too. Right? Yeah. Is that correct? Uh, that, that's correct. I mean, the, the, first of all, uh, we have to understand that giving dawah to, uh, giving dawah is an obligation upon every single Muslim. Okay. Right. This is this is important because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, uh, anni walaw ayah," and this is a, a, a convey from me even if it is an ayah. Mm. So the scholars, they, 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 there is a discussion amongst what does it mean when they when uh, the, when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, ayah. Uh, does it mean an ayah of the Quran? Mm. And some scholars have actually understood this, but there's other scholars such as uh, Sheikh Al-Bani and others who considered uh, ayah not to mean an ayah of the Quran per se, but it's just any sentence from the from the Quran or from the Sunnah. So it can include a a, a verse from the Quran, or it can conc- it can include a uh, a statement from the Prophet ﷺ, but not necessarily an entire ayah. Perhaps okay. it's just okay. a piece of knowledge. Right. Okay. So then, what they say is that based on this hadith, they say that there's two elements to mm. this particular hadith. Like Sheikh Salih Al Fawzan, he mentioned that there's two ele- two levels of this hadith. There's uh, tabliq of uh, of the actual uh, of the nas, which means that you are, if a person knows knows only, like, you know, th- he knows. Uh, like a, a few ayat, and he just says it to the to to people he's giving that word to. Mm. Then all he's doing is just conveying that. Okay. Then there's something called tabliq al ma'na, which is only for the scholars, and that is to expand upon that knowledge. But there's no harm, as other scholars have mentioned, to uh, effectively just quote what the scholars say, and they say that, that it means this and it means that. Okay. And if they need any more details, then you refer them on to the right people, basically. Exactly. So the point is, is that you, whatever, whoever you're calling that, with, whoever, whatever that you're giving to an individual, mm. you just need to ensure that you know what you, that, that everything that you're saying is from the Quran. Okay, Muslim. mashallah. Also, and, and you're not, you're not transgressing. You're not going, uh, you know, uh, beyond those bounds. And if a person asks you a question and you genuinely don't know, yeah. then 
then you just say, you say I don't know, yeah, yeah. and just which is just, half of knowledge. Yeah. Um, nowadays we have devices we can just call, call, give them a contact or something like sure, this, right? Sure. Uh, on that particular hadith of the Prophet where he says, sure. "Convey for me even if it's one verse." Yeah, this is just based on the double. And correct me if I'm wrong, sure. right? What it seems like is that there is a lot of emphasis in that. Mm. For example, you know, if someone, if I, if I see a friend and he says to me, you know, my my brother's getting married tomorrow. Come to his wedding, even if it's for five minutes. Sure. Right. So there seems to be this type of emphasis there, that where the Prophet is saying, convey something from me, even if it's a Absolutely, small amount. Yeah. Right. So which is again emphasizing the point where we all need to get involved in the dawah to whatever level we can. Based on what you said, there's actually yeah. a very beautiful statement that you know where you said everyone needs to get involved in dawah, whatever level it is. There's actually a very nice statement. I just wanna read it out That's from Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. And what he mentions based on this this uh, this particular verse, uh, this particular hadith, he said, if a person understands what he is calling to, it makes no difference whether mm. he is a great and prominent scholar or a seeker of knowledge who is serious in his pursuit thereof, or a regular person who has certain knowledge of the issue in question. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, the translation is, the convey from me even it is even if it is one verse or one ayah, and he did not stipulate. That the caller should have reached a high level of knowledge, but it is essential that he should have knowledge of of that to uh, 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 of that to which he is calling people. But calling out of ignorance or calling based on emotion mm. is not permissible. Mm. And this is uh, very uh, clear in what he's trying to say that this hadith is and and, and that in general is not for the scholars alone. It's for mm. every single. Uh, Muslim, it's and fine. it doesn't matter what level of knowledge they're on, whether this person doesn't, you know, just has a few ayat or has a few hadith, or whether this person, you know, is a hafiz of Quran, mm. you know, so it doesn't matter which it's level fine. of knowledge someone's at. Okay, to summarize, I guess what we're saying is as a Muslim, you need to get involved in the dawah, but make sure when you get involved, involved. And make sure that whatever you say is backed up by sound understanding and is based on the Quran and the Sunnah. Absolutely. And I guess it's that simple. So what we're saying is give dawah, but yes, it has to be based on knowledge. But there is no sort of pre-packaged amount of knowledge that you need before you get involved in the dawah, right? So it's convey what you know as long as you know it for certain and sure. it's backed up, basically. Absolutely. Any last words of encouragement for brothers getting involved in the dawah now, or just general words of encouragement for the guys already involved in the dawah? Sure. I mean, my, the. What I would say regarding da'wah is that da'wah is one of the best ways that a person can gain a huge amount of knowledge. Imagine, brothers and sisters, that you know someone uh, that you're giving da'wah to, they happen to be non-Muslim, and by the the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person through your hands has been given hidayah. Sure. Now, when this person becomes a Muslim, and this is mind-blowing, when this person becomes a Muslim, then every single deed that this person does you're going to get a reward for. It's like having a second life. Imagine if someone, you, you know someone who doesn't pray. It doesn't have to be non-Muslim. It can be someone who doesn't pray who's Muslim. But they don't pray regularly, but then you encourage them to pray, pray uh, or whatever the case may be. And they start praying so every single salah that they do. Um, imagine if they got children, they're going to be teaching their children how to make salah. Then you're going to get reward for it. Again, it's like having another life. So really, um, try to make as many lives as possible for yourself through uh, da'wah. Yeah, that doesn't mean stop praying because someone else is praying. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Keep praying yourself as well. Yeah, inshallah. Zakallah khair. Zakallah khair. Allah bless you. Amin. Inshallah. You too.